Good morning, big girls. Today we're going over my favorite sleepers at the wide receiver position that you need to be drafting in fantasy this year, okay? Criteria, you must be getting picked 110 or later. So your ADP, your average draft position, 110 or later. We're talking deep guys. We're talking shallow guys. We're talking guys that play at the line of scrimmage. We're talking guys that score touchdowns, all right? Everything all in between. We also just did the running back version of this on the channel yesterday. So if you're new here, go watch that. Go subscribe. We're going to be doing this for quarterbacks, tight ends, all the good stuff in between. I already came pre-tucked, but I'll give you all a minute to tuck it. Let's get it. First wide receiver up on this list is a Buffalo Bill by the name of Curtis Samuel, currently getting picked 126th overall. So we're kind of deep already, all right? And the way I look at this Buffalo offense is Josh Allen's going to be very good. They're going to move the ball pretty quickly and, and effectively, and they're going to put up stats and numbers. And with Stefan Diggs not there anymore, there is a shitload of opportunity. Also, Gabe Davis is gone. I should mention that. He's just so bad that he slipped my mind. But both of those guys are gone, which is like 240 targets per year just evaporated out of the offense. And now they're throwing a bunch of stuff against the wall. Like Kincaid will be good. James Cook will be good, but we don't really have any sort of solidified depth chart behind them. We don't know how it's going to break out. We don't know how the target share is going to work. And Curtis Samuel is coming off of a quietly really good year in Washington. And when I look at the way Josh Allen peppers his slot wide receivers in previous years, like there have always been guys that have eight on a week to week basis, whether it was like Emmanuel Sanders, Cole Beasley, even like Isaiah McKenzie, those guys always had random 10, 12, 14 catch games that like would come out of nowhere. But there's times where Josh Allen just takes what the defense gives to him towards that slot wide receiver. And Curtis Samuel, to me, the guy that they just signed this offseason, went out, inked them, is going to be like the most underrated weapon in this offense. I also wouldn't be surprised if we saw Curtis Samuel utilized a little bit like he was in Carolina, mixing in at running back. Like they don't want to overtouch pause. They don't want to overwork James Cook, right? Especially not on the ground. So I, I think when you look at what this Buffalo team did in the offseason, they just threw a bunch of shit against the wall, and they're hoping it sticks. Like, they drafted Keon Coleman in the second round, who I think is a cool wide receiver, but you have to take him 50 spots higher than Curtis Samuel. Again, Kincaid will be good. Quill Shakir is fine for what he is. And then they brought in a bunch of fucking cones. MVS, Chase Claypool, Matt Collins. Like, half of those guys are not even going to make the roster. And you can get Samuel at such a discounted price. Like, if you want to get in on this passing game, and I like Kincaid in the fifth round, I don't like Keon Coleman in the seventh round. If you want to get in for a cheap price, Curtis Samuel is the easy way to do that. He's the cheapest part of this passing game that I feel confident will actually be playing. I don't know how the rest of the snap shares, I don't know how the rest of the targets are going to shimmy out. Like if we went and fast forwarded six to eight weeks into the season, do I feel confident that Keon Coleman is playing 90% of the snaps? No, I do not. Do I feel confident that Khalil Shakir is anything besides a slot wide receiver playing more than 60% of the snaps? No, I do not. These are all kind of projections, but with Curtis Samuel, I actually feel really, really confident that they know he's a good player and they're going to be utilizing him right away and probably in a very versatile way. So Curtis Samuel is one of my favorite really cheap picks in fantasy football this year. So let's move on to wide receiver number two. And if at any point you just want the full list of all of these guys at every position, quarterback, wide receiver, running back, tight end, plus our rankings, all that kind of stuff, our draft guide is available for a discounted pre-order price right now. It goes live August 1st, but again, you can get it for much cheaper right now on bdge.co. It's got all that stuff. It, it's beautiful. It's going to be our best product that we have put out to date. So bdge.co, or if you are new to Underdog Fantasy, the cheapest way to get the draft guide, just $10, is by depositing on Underdog Fantasy with the code BDGE. All right. So not only are they going to hit you with a bunch of deposit bonuses when you use our code, but you'll get our draft guide absolutely free when it comes out on August 1st. So very, very cheap Underdog Fantasy. Little bit of cheap BDG.co pre order price before August 1st. Get all of the sleepers, including my man's Josh Palmer, the Los Angeles Chargers wide receiver who is currently going off the board, pick 150. Josh Palmer is like, um, He's almost like the 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 Zeke of wide receivers to me. He's already shown chemistry with Justin Herbert. He's really the only weapon that they have left from the previous regime. He's the only weapon that has any sort of chemistry with Justin Herbert right now, right? Keenan Allen's gone. Mike Williams is gone. Austin Eckler's gone. The cone Gerald Everett is gone. That's like 350 targets per year over the last three or four years. Again, just gone. You could see a theme of this video, all right? Curtis Samuel, Diggs and Davis gone. Josh Palmer. Allen, Eckler, Mike Williams, Gerald Everett, 
gone. Okay. Lad, Lad is cool. The same argument I just made with like Keon Coleman. I think Lad will probably be a, a very good PPR player, but having to pick him 60, 70 spots higher than Josh Palmer feels crazy. And while Josh Palmer is a vet, like Josh Palmer's 24 years old, Lad McConkey's 22 years old. Josh Palmer is also a day two pick. I think he is a solidified 85% plus snap player this year tied to Justin Herbert. And I'm not predicting any sort of like monster breakout. What I think you're looking at at pick 150 here is a guy who's going to catch 60 to 65 passes, go for between eight and 900 yards and score six touchdowns. He will be a really nice week to week floor play for you that you're getting for absolutely nothing. And maybe he's even better than we're giving him credit for. He's hadn't, they haven't had the chance to give him any sort of chance because they've had fucking studs like Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and all these guys running the passing game for the last bunch of years. So this will be a, an extremely run heavy offense, obviously, but Justin Herbert will still throw the ball 475 times, 500 times. It's got to go somewhere. And they don't really have a lot of somewhere to go to outside of Josh Palmer and Lad McConkey at the minute. So Josh Palmer is a guy that my ownership share on underdog fantasy in those drafts is extremely high right now. Moving on to pick number three, and this is one of everybody's favorites, you know, uh, sleeper breakout, whatever you want to call it. Dontavian Wicks, the Green Bay Packers sixth round wide receiver. He's currently going off the board. Pick 153. Realistically, the way that this th this like Packers offense could not have been put together better or could not have been luckier, I should say. They went with that Buffalo approach. Let's just throw a bunch of shit against the wall and see what sticks. Good news for Green Bay fans. Everything stuck. Jane Reed was fucking awesome. Romeo Dobbs was good again. Dontavian Wicks was great. Like everyone, honestly, except for Christian Watson was pretty good last year. The obvious really tough part about projecting Wicks to really break out is like, where is the actual path for more playtime? Last year, Jaden Reed was their best wide receiver, and he only played like 52% of the team snaps. Christian Watson was hurt most of the year. He played about 40% of the snaps. Despite all this Wicks still played less than 42% of the snaps and cracked 70% just twice all year. Now, the obvious path and what fantasy players are going to want to yell about is like, just bench Dobbs. Just bench Dobbs and let Wicks take 85, 90% of the snaps. Because Dobbs was the leading wide receiver last year in terms of playtime. But there was really no sign at any point of the year that Dobbs' playtime was going to start to decline. Like, it wasn't like, okay, over the last month, over the last six weeks into the playoffs, Dobbs started playing a lot less so we could project that going into the next year. That didn't happen. So we are just saying that because Dobbs is the most boring player to us, so we just want him to be benched. And it feels like the Packers really like him. And to be fair, he's like a really solid wide receiver three role complementary possession receiver. Like if he was on the Falcons, I'd be pretty hyped about having him in front of or right behind like Darnell Mooney as our two three. So I don't know that in a real practical sense, it makes sense for Dobbs to just kind of get benched. But I want to see Wicks play more. I think he deserves to be able to play more. And I don't think it's crazy. Like, I think he's a, a very talented receiver that overcame a lot last year, being a late day three pick to make the roster when they had all these younger, more explosive rookies and then got play time and then produced with it as well. Like, you look at his RP profile, he cleared like really high rates for a rookie of that caliber. 71st percentile success rate versus man coverage, 69th first press. 49th for a zone, but if you're an outside uh, separator, outside receiver like Wicks is, like those numbers are very, very good. And this is per Matt Harmon, receptionperception.com. Phenomenal resource for you guys to use. So I think he's talented in his own right. And then just attaching yourself, going back to this offense, to an ascending Green Bay team, Jordan Love last year had the seventh most passing yards, the second most passing touchdowns, and he is sixth in the MVP odds right now behind Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, Stroud, Lamar, Jordan Love. Okay, so this is projecting to be a very good offense where multiple players can eat. And if there's an injury to any of those guys, like we'll see Wicks step up and play a much more prominent role in the offense. So down here at pick 153, love taking shots on Wicks. Moving on to wide receiver number four with probably like one of the swaggier names in all of the NFLs, Mr. Pop. Douglas of the New England Patriots going off the board at pick 163. See, I need like a filter screen on him just to, just to talk about him. Pop gets me excited. Demario Douglas, right? Dougie got some great looks last year despite starting the season behind Kendrick Bourne. It's a little bit like uh, Jacoby Myers where he can get volume. He had a lot of volume, but the touchdown upside was damn near zero. OK, and I think Pop is obviously a much better full PPR play. But towards the end of last year, like last six to eight weeks, you can literally pencil him in for about 10 PPR points every single time. He was going five or 55, 
five for 55, five for 55 in the most na- malnutritious fucking offense, maybe in the last like 10 years. That offense was brutal, brutal to watch. And now, you know, everything you're hearing about him out of camp is that he's been their best playmaker. He's been the star. He's been starting at slot wide receiver for him. And we think back to Drake May, who got interviewed at camp saying that Drake May compared Pop Douglas to Josh Downs. Josh Downs was a phenomenal slot wide receiver at UNC. Drake May obviously played at UNC with him. So I love the comp. I think it's a phenomenal comp. And here's the thing about this Patriots offense. Like I've been talking about this a lot recently in stuff that we filmed, but you need to leave room for the the chance that the Patriots offense is just a lot better than we're projecting it to be. It's it's easy to look back at last year's offense and be like, this team has no fucking hope. They're going to score 15 points a game. But this is how things turn around. Like This is how an offense turns around and changes the way that you think about them in your mind. They bring in a new coaching staff. They have a top three draft pick, and they use it on a quarterback. They bring in a bunch of new weapons or allow their young weapons to finally thrive in a bigger role. Like When these things happen, they happen – very fast and they happen when people are unassuming and they don't expect it and then by the time they realize it it is too late and the prices of these players are too steep so when teams are in the phase of like rebuilding it's the cheapest you're going to get these guys and it's the right time to buy and that's the argument i would make for taking pop douglas a bunch at pick 160 or later or even fucking early i'd probably take them all the way up to pick like 130 140 because of the role i saw him play last year because of what I'm hearing out of camp this year. And I just think he's a fun, explosive player tied to hopefully a high upside quarterback in Drake May. Like if Drake May is just better than we think, if Drake May can have this offense as, you know, the 21st scoring offense in the NFL rather than like the 31st, we're looking at a huge increase in just overall production and yardage and touchdown scoring ability. So Pop Douglas, if you're in a full PPR league, needs to be on your radar. And then probably like a worse version of of Pop Douglas will go over to a team that keeps beating the shit out of them in the Super Bowl, the New York Giants, Wondell Robinson, his ADP is outside of the first 200 picks. The next three guys actually all outside of the top 200 picks, and I would gladly take him with my last round pick. Wondell Robinson will now be multiple years removed from the ACL tear, which is what we try to do in terms of targeting players when they are injured. If they have an ACL tear, we don't take them the year after. We take them the year after, after, right? And they have nothing going on over the middle of the field, right? Malik Neighbors is going to be the stud. He's going to be the alpha. He's going to be the main target earner out there in New York. But Wondell Robinson last year, he became the safety valve a lot of the time. And he adds like a rushing element that they'll definitely need in New York. He adds playmaking ability, sort of like Curtis Samuel out there in uh, Buffalo now. But again, with New England, like I don't hate the idea of leaving open the possibility that there can be another pass-catching weapon in New York outside of just Malik Neighbors. He's going to the fucking moon, but you also have to pay the price of gold in order to get him. But if you look at the Giants' like depth chart, it, it's Malik Neighbors. They don't with Darren Waller retiring. They don't have a pass catching tight end of consequence. I like Danny Bellinger, and we'll we'll talk about him a little bit when we do the tight end version of this video. So if you are not subscribed yet and you want to hear my thoughts on the tight ends and the quarterbacks, make sure you subscribe. But they don't have a real pass catching tight end. They don't have a real pass catching running back with Saquon out there now. So they they like really need someone to develop into a playmaking option. And I think it's going to be Wondell Robinson. Maybe it's Darius Slayton, to be honest. Maybe we're just overthinking it. He's been that guy for the last, like, fucking four years consecutively. But, like, at some point, you have to think that they're just going to let their young guys try to become what they drafted him to be. Like, they took Wondell Robinson in the second round. He was a second-round pick for them. They took Jalen Hyatt in the third round. I actually don't mind swapping back and forth between both of these guys. I don't mind letting Malik Neighbors go to someone else. And then with your last-round pick, Wondell Robinson or Jalen Hyatt. Wondell Robinson or Jalen Hyatt. If it's full PPR, much prefer Wondell Robinson, obviously. Jalen Hyatt's a downfield stretcher, playmaker type of guy who can be the Darius Slayton in this offense. Uh, But again, I think you need to leave room for the possibility that maybe there's another play in this offense that could be pretty, pretty, pretty good. And that's the same with the Los Angeles Rams. Of course, we want Puka. Of course, we want Cooper Cup. But you know who was damn good for a decent stretch last year? Demarcus Robinson. Demarcus Robinson out there in L.A. went bonkers for like a six-week period. These splits are from weeks 13 through 17. This guy was scoring every single game. This guy was averaging nearly seven targets a game. He was putting up 64 receiving yards per game and almost 16 full PPR points per game. All right. 
Matt Stafford had this offense buzzing. This team was just a million times better than we thought that they would be. Their offensive line ranked very highly last year, despite going into the year thinking that they were going to be one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL. They had a dominant ground game with Kyron Williams. They had a dominant pass game led by Puka, the second coming. And now they'll have Cooper Cup fully healthy with Demarcus Robinson as their three. All right. So D Rob is a guy. I look at Cup. I look at Puka. If one of those guys goes down, I'm expecting similar production like we saw at the end of last year when D Rob got that role and performed to a high degree. Matt Stafford played 15 games last year, but if you pace it out to 17 games, what he did, he's five passing yards behind the league leader, Tua. All right. This offense was good. This offense was fucking great. And Aaron Donald is gone. So this defense might just be the fucking woke. All right. And they might need to score a ton of points because they're probably going to let up a ton of points. And that means passing, 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 passing. Demarcus Robinson, it, this is one of my favorite stacks in all of underdog because Matt Safford is like the 20th quarterback off the board for whatever reason. And you can get Demarcus Robinson basically with your last round pick every time. So the Stafford D Rob is the cheapest high upside stack that you can get in all of underdog. All right. So if you're not yet drafting on underdog fantasy and you could rip off these $3 best ball drafts, it is the most fun you're going to have all summer and it is the best single way to actually prepare for uh, your, you know, your home draft. You get on top of all the trends. You'll know all the sleepers by the time you get to pick like 15, 16, 17. The guys that are drafting in these leagues, very sharp. They're paying money to be in these leagues, so they will tell you who you need to be drafting later on. Underdog Fantasy, promo code BDGE, will not only get you those deposit bonuses, but will get you the draft guide absolutely free. Demarcus Robinson, goaded, but the real goat, the real goat. Y'all thought I was going to make a wide receiver sleeper list without Michael Wilson. Michael Wilstein, he's still the goat, and he should be the wide receiver too on this depth chart. They asked him to do a ton last year as a rookie when Hollywood Brown was out. And he picked up the offense pretty well. You know, he had a couple, like, nice explosion games, multi-touchdown game he had sprinkled in there. But when we're looking at the underlying metrics, I'm so happy Matt Harmon did a fucking profile on Michael Wilson. Like, came out of nowhere. I had, I had no faith he was going to do that. Like, why would he do it? But he did it. And his RP profile don't look that too dissimilar from Dontavian Wicks, where he is separating versus man and press at a pretty, pretty high rate for a rookie. And... He had 565 receiving yards in 13 games last year. If you pace that out to a full season, that is 740 yards, which is sneaky good for a rookie year. He also had two donut games after returning from a four-week absence. And anytime a player returns from a multi-week injury, their first game or two back from that, like their, um, their production is significantly declined, okay? So when I look at what he did last year as a rookie, his underlying metrics just being a separator, they were good. His stats were good given the context. Like this was an offense that ranked 24th in pass attempts per game, 26th in passing yards per game, 24th in points per game. Uh, expect this offense to be really improved. Kyler now fully removed from the injury. They drafted Marvin Harrison Jr. Trey McBride broke out last year, but Hollywood is gone. Rondell Moore is gone. Wilson is literally free in drafts, and he'll be the wide receiver too here. Obviously, MHA and Trey McBride are probably going to combine for like 250 targets this year, but there is room for someone else to, you know, get up to 800, 900 receiving yards and score a few times. And Michael Wilson is by far and away the best wide receiver they have on the roster outside of Marvin Harrison Jr. So you're not drafting him above MHA. You ain't drafting him above Trey McBride. You ain't drafting him above a lot of people, but you should be fucking drafting Michael Wilson along with everybody else on this list because these are my favorite wide receiver sleepers getting taken at pick 110 or later in 2024 fantasy football drafts right now. If you want all of them, quarterbacks, wide receivers, running backs, tight ends, obviously subscribe to the channel because we'll be making videos about it. But the draft guide will take out all that extra legwork. You don't got to watch a single video this summer. Just pull up to your draft. Absolutely ready to fucking fire. BDGE.co will get you that pre-order price until August 1st. Then it's full price because that bitch will be live. But you can always get it, and this is throughout the entire summer, for the cheap price of $10 by depositing on Underdog Fantasy with promo code BDGE. That's all I got for y'all today. If you missed the running back version of this, we will link it down below. I will see y'all tomorrow. <laughs>